In the small stream and valley, the fish breach, the kite soars, insects and birds chirp and sing. In the forest, all the flying and crawling creatures live in harmony. The fireflies appear at night. The general public has an imagination or expectation of nature and nothing more. But that and more creatures than have ever been seen by the public can truly be found in Cha Tian Shan Nature Reserve. The Cha Tian Shan Nature Reserve is located in Taoyuan County, where Fuxing Township and Taipei County's Wulai Township meet. Topographically, Lala Mountain forms the center of the reserve and is surrounded by south and north Cha Tian Shan, Fu Fu Shan, Ta Man Shan, and Jia Kong Stream, the gateway for northeastern monsoons. Therefore, this area's landscape, the soil, hydrology, animals, and plants play a major role in ecosystems in northern parts of the island and must therefore not be disturbed. On the southwestern edge of the reserve, Compartment 33 is easily accessible to the general public, and therefore the administrators have opened La La Shan Forest Reserve, an area of 75 hectares, as a buffer zone for the reserve, and to act as an area for people to understand the ecology of the area. Because this area has the most abundant plant communities in northern Taiwan, the ecosystems are very diverse and complex. The largest number of insects in this area belongs to the lower levels of food chains. In fact, most insect species of Taiwan can be found here, and that is why this area can be regarded as an insect repository. One of these special insects is the jumbo dragonfly, which is the largest dragonfly in Taiwan and can be seen laying its eggs in flowing mountain streams. On the Taiwan sassafras, one can sometimes find the caterpillar of the broad-tailed swallowtail butterfly, which in time will grow and turn into one of the protected butterflies in Taiwan. In addition, the Chinese hackberry often plays host to many large purple fritillary caterpillars. This is the largest member of the Nymphalidae in Taiwan. Their purple wings were once a common sight in the green hills, but due to its beauty, this butterfly has been illegally collected in such numbers that it now faces extinction. Another kind of endemic butterfly, a true marvel in the world of insects, was only found recently. Its existence in the beech forest was not confirmed until 1994 and has since been named Sibitanio Zephyrus quafue. And behind this name is a poetic cultural meaning that embodies the difficulties the discoverer had to endure in nature during his search for the butterfly. And then we found a new species. We had to give it a name. So it occurred to me, while trying to think of a name, that every time we tried to observe the butterfly, it was like we were chasing after the sun. In the mornings, there was sun, but when we rushed to the area, fog and rain often rolled in. So this situation made me think of Kwa Fu, who chased after the sun. That is why I decided to name it Sibitanio Zephyrus Kwa Fue. The Taiwan beech is a rare and valuable plant that is protected by the Cultural Heritage Preservation Act. Its origin dates back to the Ice Age, and North Cha Tian Shan is one of the most famous locations where this tree can be seen. This 
this area is a cloud forest, which means when researchers work there during cloudy days, they will hope for sunshine. This is like the actual legend of Kwa Fu. The butterflies lay their eggs in the first 10 days or so of June. The eggs then remain like this for the summer, through autumn and winter, for almost 200 days of the year, and then hatch in spring when the new buds of the beech appear. The caterpillars appear at the same time as the young succulent leaves. Because the caterpillars of Sibitanio zephyrus quafue only feed on the young beech leaves and not the mature ones, the caterpillars must appear by mid-May and feed and grow before the beech leaves are mature and the tissue is hard. The caterpillars have to complete the larva and pupa stages so the adult butterflies can appear at the beginning of June. When they must find mates and lay their eggs to complete their life cycle. The new generation then develops in their eggs during the hot summer, gaudy yellow autumn and the quiet nights of winter. Their beautiful figures can only be appreciated during late spring and early summer. They come and go like forest spirits. At sunrise, like the proverb of the early bird, bird songs can be heard without end, making the forest lively and conspicuous. The insects, which are a rich and varied food source, attract numerous kinds of birds in large quantities. Up to 33 kinds of protected birds, such as the swinhoe's pheasant, spotted scops owl, and the Indian black eagle, and rare species like the Taiwan tit, Varied tit, the white-throated laughing thrush, and many others can be seen here. We can see different species in different areas. So in the middle and upper layers of broadleaf trees, we can see the white-throated laughing thrush in groups. They call and sing while frequently moving about which makes them difficult to observe. If you stroll in the huge tree district and you look at the giant Formosa red cypress, the small Eurasian nuthatch would move up and down the trunk, pecking at cracks in the bark in search of insects. In the mid and upper layers of the broadleaf forest, one can often see the delicate and pretty red-headed tit and green-backed tit search for food together. The belly and wings of the green-backed tit are a combination of yellowish-green and sapphire-blue, making them beautiful birds that are often caught and sold as pets by selfish people. And if we pay attention to the lower areas, one will see the Taiwan Sibia and the Taiwan Uhina as common as sparrows are seen in the lowlands. Both these birds are very active and not afraid of humans. One small, the other large. Both these musicians play a major role in nature's orchestra. In isolated parts of the logging road, in soggy places, you can see the Swinho's pheasant walking. This breathtaking scene is under pressure from poaching and habitat destruction, which makes the Swinho's pheasant extremely cautious when foraging. A 
Around the mountain stream, the white-tailed blue robin, covered by shimmering blue feathers, continuously sways its tail, revealing the distinctive white stripes on it. Near the open stream bed, the Taiwan whistling thrush makes a call that sounds like a braking bicycle, a sound often heard in this area. In the steep upper mountainous areas, there are numerous brooks in which you can find Swinho's brown frogs. Their call is a regular, monotonous, bird-like sound. After a summer thunder shower, one after another, Sauter's brown frogs appear on the stones in the brook to attract mates. The Moltrechti's green tree frog hides by day and only comes out at night. Their coloration provides outstanding protection. This is quite a beautiful green tree frog, which lives in the trees and only goes to water during the breeding season, all for the future generation. Assembly of such a large variety of creatures will also attract their natural enemies to the brook, like the mountain keelback that favors the dark and damp environment, and which is a rare reptile in mountainous areas. But not all snakes prefer the moist environment, like the beautiful mandarin rat snake, which looks like the broken stones and rocks and feeds on small mammals or birds. Because of this district's great topographical and climatic differences, it is a good habitat for rarely seen large wild animals to survive and reproduce. This includes the Formosan black bear, leopard cat, and Formosan wild boar. The tender buds in spring are the favorite food of the Formosan munchak, which are the smallest deer in Taiwan. They are very alert animals because on the forest floor there could always be a predator like the leopard cat, which looks like a domestic cat. The graceful movements of these rare animals reveals their natural beauty. These cats have two whitish gray markings on the forehead and the body is covered by spots that look like coins, which is why some people call them money cats. Hiding on the side is the golden weasel, which seems small and cute, but is actually a regular carnivore that feeds on carrion in the forest. In the lower areas of the forest, among the decaying tree stumps and earth mounds, one can see the Formosan pangolin, whose body is covered with scales. This is a mammal that specializes in eating ants. On the branches in the tops of the trees, we can often see Formosan macaques. These primates jump among the ends of branches in search of food, or can be seen sitting grooming each other, living with their families in their communities. In fall, the nuts of beech trees attract Formosan black bears for a visit. These great bears are masters at climbing trees, which enable them to reach fruit.
By evening, the white-faced flying squirrel, which was in hiding during the day, seems to have been released at the same time. They move around in the pitch darkness of the forest, where one cannot even see one's own hand, but when a light is shown on them, they will freeze. The hunters will then use this opportunity to shoot them, to slaughter these lovely little animals to satisfy the tourist demand for bushmeat in mountain shops. To ensure the continued survival of the animals and plants in the area, and to establish a basic ecological database of the animals and plants, the Shinju District Office of the Forestry Bureau not only established a permanent plot, but has also requested long-term monitoring by academic institutions. These institutions add their discoveries, like Horaga Rarasana, to our understanding of this area. But the Cha Tian Shan Nature Reserve still faces threats from the activities of the visiting public, who mainly enter the park at the two open gates La La Shan and Man Yue Yuan. Annually, about 220,000 and 120,000 people enter the area at the respective gates. Also, from year to year, mountaineering has increased in North Cha Tian Shan. Animals in this area thus face greater pressure due to the disturbances and increased risk of poaching. Therefore, to conserve the habitats and rare animals of the area, the rangers from the Dashi Forestry Station will often go on patrols from time to time to prevent illegal logging and poaching. If you move further to your right-hand side, you will reach compartment 32, and further on, you will find Lala Shan. The most common offense determines our most important duty, the prevention of illegal logging. In addition to that is the poaching problem, which affects the wild animals. We have to look at which areas have the most valuable tree species, and which zones have a poaching history, and then we patrol those areas more frequently. When you see adorable animals treated cruelly by hunters, doesn't it make you realize the close bonds we have with nature? Conserving nature is not only the responsibility of conservation organizations and governmental departments. It is something that affects the lives of all the people in Taiwan. We are hoping that by introducing the plants, animals, their behavior and ecology, people will be reminded to care about and protect this natural inheritance for future generations. Only in the most pristine wild jungles and wilderness areas can the ecological balance be conserved to maintain a colorful and diverse world.